This is Isabel Vetter with Music Mastery, and today we'll be talking about the breathing, embouchure, and comb production of the French horn. Okay, so beginning with breathing, um, well, with any instrument, even string instruments, uh, it is very important to know how to breathe properly, which seems like an easy concept because we all breathe on a daily basis and usually don't have to think too much about it. But when you're playing an instrument, especially one where you have to breathe in the music because you're blowing air out, um, it's super important. So with the French horn and with other instruments I've found, like the trumpet or trombone or even uh, woodwinds, um, it's important to start with a nice deep breath, begin your practice, rehearsal, performance, whatever it may be. So just and as you're doing that, you can internalize the music and be like, okay, what is this gonna sound like? And try and like picture, okay, what is the first note? The first note is the most important one. Like, okay, what's this first note sound like? How am I gonna play it? And so then you have it in your head. So when you start it, it's like not a surprise. And you're like, oh, I know exactly what this is. Okay, and then as you're playing for breathing, um, if you're doing a really fast passage, for instance, um, you'll say you're doing like a bunch of eighth notes, you don't really have time to go and then go back if it's just like a straight line of eighth notes. So in that point, a lot of times if you have other French horn players with you, you can talk with them and say, hey, how about you breathe this measure and I'll breathe this next one. Just so you can, it's called stagger breathing. Um, so you can be like, okay, you breathe here so that I'll keep playing there. So, when, so the audience, when they hear that, they're like, oh, it's so seamless, but just because you guys are all breathing at the same time. So, but when it's a fast passage, you have to kind of go, and so, and you don't want to go, you know, like whole shoulder, whole body movement. You want to try and be like, because you want it to come from your belly. If you're in high-waisted pants, the fill those up, you know? And so you just kind of go, and you should hear it. You shouldn't be able to hear the like, of the breath, because if it's, then first off, my, my shoulders are going up, and second off, it's just not a full breath. Even if you don't have a lot of time, you can still, Get in. That sounds kind of bad, but that's just me. But it, you, it's it's better because I'm getting a deeper breath, but still in a short amount of time. So I'm just playing constant eighth notes, and I don't have a lot of time. And just a short little one will help. Also, you don't want to go and like totally go off, you know, of your French horn, because then you'll lose a little bit of like, oh my gosh, where did my aperture go? So it's best to just go, you know. So just like, don't really move. Just to so still get off of it, but don't like. <laughs> and then go back. But then when you do have like a measure or two of rest, um, if it's a measure, depending on what tempo you're going, I usually keep my horn up. If I'm playing off my leg, I'll just put it back on. I'll put it on my leg just to rest a bit, rest my hand and stretch it out and just nice breathing and then I'll go back to out. But if you're just doing this, but I wouldn't ever just like, you know, for that measure rest because you want to be ready. If you have like eight measures rest, then yeah. You can, you're okay with putting it down. But if it's like quick, yeah, just keep it up there and keep it ready. But you also don't want to be too relaxed during that unless it's like one beat per measure and it's like, you know, like super duper slow. Um, then I guess you could be a little more relaxed in the beginning. But as you're going in to the next measure or whatever that you play, um, you want to be in the mindset and your breathing needs to be. So if I'm playing a really fast passage and then during the rest, I'm just like, you know, just like super relaxed, I might come in a little too late. But if I'm just like thinking about it and then I, in my head, I'm like, okay, one, two, three. And you kind of kind of have to like breathe in time. So if I go one, two, then I'm, it's just, everything's gonna be a little off. So it's best to just internalize the beat too, so that you breathe and then come in right in time. And if it's slow, same thing, like one, two, three, so, you know, as long as it's just whatever the time is, just try and like match it with that so that your breathing is in time. For embouchure, uh, so French horns have the smallest mouthpiece for brass instruments, uh, which is difficult to use, but it's quite fun once you get the hang of it. So it's, yeah, it's so small. And how I play it and how most French horns players use it is that, so you have your two lips and the majority Majority of the mouthpiece is going to be your top lip and just a little bit of the bottom lip, and you got to make sure you center it. And tight corners, always. Even if you're playing low notes, or you're like down here, I still have tight corners. So here's
there's like a mid note. I got tight corners, and there's a low note. Tight corners, and then really high, of course, super tight corners. And also, when I go really high, I so my lips are usually like this, but when I go really high, they kind of like disappear. So I'm just trying to get as much pressure and air through as I can, because that's how you get those really high notes. So I'm playing a high note, you know, just really nice and tight, whatever gets there, and a good way to practice like the different embouchures you might have to use. Because whatever you do in the mouthpiece, it's it makes it a lot easier to translate it to the actual horn. So a uh, good exercise that I do is the sirens. So now I'm like, okay, I buzzed that high note and I buzzed that low note, so that means I can most likely play those on the horn. It's kind of add the fingerings. Um, okay, and then for the tone production, um, a big part of French horn's tone production comes from our hands. Sometimes you can get a bit lazy with it if you're not thinking about it and accidentally just close the bell off with your hand or just like let it limp in there, which is not great. You gotta be in this nice little crescent kind of position and right at the, you know, upper right and nice and open. You don't wanna be like down here like this, you know. Um, so the tone pressure comes from that because if I'm trying to play nice and open and I have my hand here, then nobody's gonna know. But if I go up here, whoa, what's that great sound? It's you. Um, and then also for your embouchure that has to do with your tone production. So if I'm playing super just like, I know that you need to be a little tight to play French horn, to get the high notes especially, but you don't want to be like, like you just ate a lemon, you need to be still like open. So if I'm playing with like clenched teeth and just like super agitated, my sound's going to be like, sound great. Did she just eat a lemon? No, I didn't. I was just very tense. So if I have a nice and I'm still like playing a high note and I still have the tight corners and I'm still like direct air, but I feel, you know, a little more lighter than musicmastery.com for more videos like this. Um, and yeah, I hope that this was helpful and that you get some good use out of this information. Thank you.